Maryland, Indiana. Indiana's a wagon. I'm going to say it. They are so good, man. Like, they they overcame, was it four first-half turnovers? And they still put up 500 total yards of offense. They were 7 of 13 on third down. They got to Billy Edwards five times. And also, not to mention, I was worried about penalties. Only four penalties. No big deal. Curtis Rourke came back in a big way in that second half. He... He's really impressed me. And that the, the set of running backs that you got there, Elijah Serrett. I mean, just Indiana has been has blown my mind, dude. Kurt Signetti is is really good at coaching football, man. Yeah, to have to lose the turnover margin by four and still win by double digits against a conference opponent, that is awesome. And you well, gave co- up a hundred yards rushing to Roman Hemby. Yeah, well, Hemby's a good football player. Well, he had the bit the the, the seventy five yard, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. a big chunk so. of that, obviously. But outside of that, down to down, they played pretty well against the run. And listen, I got I'll give credit here to Maryland and Billy Edwards. I thought he played okay. I thought he played okay. He just ran into Curtis Work and those wide receivers for Indiana are very good. They're deep. There's a lot of them. Surrett's obviously incredible, as you mentioned. But I I really like what I'm seeing from Maryland, even though they're zero two in the conference right now. They've been battling. Obviously, the Michigan State loss was tough. But listen, I the middle of the Big Ten, I think, is going to be super fluid all year. I think your rankings are going to be, you know, very up and down week to week, kind of. <clears throat> and we'll see. Now, however, Indiana is firmly cementing themselves in that upper middle tier, I think, in terms of teams right there with your Illinois, your Iowa's. I guess if you want to throw, you know, Rutgers, Nebraska in there as well. They're battling. They're they're battling, and I think when we talked about Indiana, we talked about their their early schedule had a lot of winnable football games, also losable for sure. Right at the beginning of the season, but they have looked very good in all of them, despite their turnovers last week. And the hot start was huge. Was huge for Indiana and Kirk Signetti in year one. And yeah, like you said, they are playing awesome. They are playing awesome. Yeah, and they're. I think barely scraping in the top 25. I, I think Indiana right now, and this is crazy. I don't know if this, they're playing like a top 15 team to me right now. Like I would, I would probably take Indiana. Listen to me. L- listen to this. Listen to this. If Indiana was hosting Missouri, I would take Indiana to win that game. Well, I mean, Missouri hasn't looked good there, but here's what I'll say too is it's but Maryland. They're, they're a top and 10 team. Well, we all know the AP poll is whatever. Garbage. But, Maryland and UCLA, I don't want to over-exaggerate that. I just think Indiana is, you know, going above our and a lot of the media's preseason expectations. I don't think we should totally rewrite the book already on that. I think it's been super impressive, and I think it's going to continue, right? But to say that they— It's their, it's their first 5-0 and start in like 60 years. Which is exactly my point. I do think we're, we're kind of not jumping the gun here, but— it's almost like they're exceeding expectations and we're putting too much stock into it, I think. And we're, we're kind of reframing our expectations for Indiana, which is a good thing. Absolutely a good thing here. But, but it's listen, also, I, it's also the eye test, though. Like, yeah, they, they're, oh, yeah. they're passing my eye test. That's why I'm, that's why I'm willing to – like, Duke is 5-0, and okay? Duke is not a good football team, okay? There's a drastic difference between Indiana and Duke. Okay, they're both 5-0 and teams. They both have exceeded expectations this far. But I'm not buying Duke stock. I'm scooping up all of the Indiana stock that I can possibly get because they've looked that good and that dominant, right? Can you agree on that at least? Yeah, yeah. Listen, I'll, and I'll also say the resilience too in that culture of coaching sounds like it's in a really good spot, you know, after a couple of years. Maybe that not being the case. I want to mention this year that you meant, so we talked about their four, their four turnovers, right? So you had the, the, the two interceptions and two fumbles. After those, you know, Two interceptions, two fumbles. It was three and out, three and out, three and out, and then a four and out, you know, turning the ball over on downs. Holy cow. That is incredible. The sudden changeness, obviously, bounce the ball. You're not going to have four turnovers every game, but to have that resilience, to have that, you know, tough and grit and like right away go back out there, get a stop, a huge stop. Because listen, you were not playing perfect offensively in that first half. If Michigan, if Maryland, excuse me, takes advantage of those turnovers, which they did none of them. This is a much different football game, but that's a credit to the coaching staff, a credit to that team and the resilience there. 
That's why I'm, I'm not going to put too much stock in this win, but I do think it, it says more about the future of Indiana and maybe not about them winning the Big Ten, right? This year, they're not, that's not really going to happen. But in terms of this culture, this program building up, absolutely love to see this.